Now we're going to take a look at Mapbox, which is another tool for uh, creating and sharing uh, web maps. Um, so these are just dynamic ones that you can interact interact with. Um, the the basic setup of this is um, fairly simple. Uh, you would go to uh, mapbox.com and start now, or um, the other URL would be tiles.mapbox.com slash new map. Uh, and you can see you start at the standard Mapbox interface here. Uh, you will need an account for this uh, because all these maps get stored under a particular account name. Um, so the easiest way to do that is just hit sign up, uh, fill this out. Uh, the, the first tier and honestly probably the only one you'll ever need is free. Um, so that's fairly straightforward to do. So then once you've signed in, uh, you get this dashboard, which is very straightforward. Um, we're going to create a new map, and uh, you get a couple options to choose from. Uh, what makes Mapbox interesting and uh, in some ways uh, more appealing than, than Google's uh, map, mapping tools is just the broad range of customization you can do to the base map. Um, so the thing that you're... Uh, your information of focus is going to be on top of. Uh, you can do many more things with that in the Mapbox interface. Um, so we're going to, I'm just going to take a, a terrain option here. You can see it gives us sort of a, a map with some uh, natural hill shade, uh, some, uh, at this far zoomed out, just some, some broad land use and land cover tools. And you can also see that there are a bunch of different options to work from here. Uh, they all have uh, sort of a general style to them. Some of them it's kind of tough to picture a use case for, but uh, others are um, pretty neat just in terms of being able to um, create color contrasting maps and interesting cartographic compositions uh, in a web dynamic map. So I'll just go back to the terrain overview um, and it's a bit tougher to add uh, your own GIS data to this sort of map interface. Uh, they have a whole product called Tile Mill, which is also free and open source. Um, but it's uh, in order to learn it is a bit beyond the auspices of this class. Uh, so for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to create uh, a point of interest. So let's say we're going to look at Syracuse and. We know that there's going to be a music festival at Leavenworth Park. And we want to be able to share that location with some friends. Uh, the point of interest customization tools uh, are similar to Google's in that you can see there's a, a bunch of different colors, a bunch of different icons to work with. Uh, let's say we go with a very basic icon here just with a circle like this. Uh, maybe make it sort of a, a darker blue. Hit place marker and then drop it where you want it. And you can see when you mouse over it the, the information pops up there. Uh, the tooltip contents, if you happen to know any HTML, this is particularly useful to include because basically you can fit entire uh, web page structures inside the contents of this pop-up, which in this case is called a tooltip. Uh, so let's just share uh, the poster for the, the Jazz Fest. Uh, you put this inside an image tag. Um, this is fairly straightforward HTML, but uh, it'll look a bit weird if you're, if you're not familiar with it. Um, the easiest ways to to learn HTML are uh, a couple of links that I'll include in the uh, the tutorial section later. Uh, we'll just make sure it's not bigger than say 250 pixels. The source of the image. Uh, let's go to the Jazz Fest web page. There's the poster. Right click, copy the image URL, paste that in close the tag, and then we are done with that marker. And now uh, you can see when you mouse over it, the image pops up in that uh, in that tooltip. And then if you click on it, it sort of sticks around, even as you zoom out. So uh, that is just creating a point of interest in a Mapbox map. Uh, you'll want to title your map something. 
Uh, and then ideally for sharing purposes, you'll want to set the map origin to a good view uh, that is, you know, an overview that's appropriate. So say there's the city of Syracuse in the center, there's our point of interest. We'll hit set, and you can see that it's chosen that boundary to be the, the standard location. Uh, probably want to share the URL, um, and otherwise just hit save changes. Uh, when you go to publish this, you'll see there are a bunch of options for sharing. This link, similar to the Google map, if you just copy that and put it in a browser, it gives you a full page map link that's still dynamic. Users can query it. If you have a whole bunch of points of interest, they can uh, get information from each of them. Um, a few other ways of doing this are there's an embed code. If you want to put this in a blog, you just grab this and paste it into your your blog content, uh, and it'll be a, a dynamic map within that web page structure. Uh, there's a JavaScript library, but that's going down a whole other road, and uh, a few other options as well. Uh, if you just want to share it on Facebook, it just pops up in the standard Facebook share um, share interface. Same with Twitter. Now, lastly, I just want to show you a couple of the base map customization options, because uh, you remember there are a bunch of presets here, but as it happens, we can actually edit any of them. Um, we go to this uh, customization tab, and you can see that within each of these, there's a series of layers. So this map is composed of, again, these are raster tiles, so they're, they're pixels, they're not actually vectors, uh, but there are a bunch of layers of these pixels. So you can turn certain things on and off. So we'll turn the buildings off, we'll turn water off, turn off the terrain, and you can see that all of these things disappear. Um, in any case, you can build up a fairly robust custom map this way. Uh, let's say we want to make the water a little bit darker, just create a certain, uh, a, uh, a, you know, a custom feel to it. Increase saturation, grab that color, bump the level down, basically fiddle around with these as much as you like. Uh, HSL is a, a fairly standard color um, manipulation scheme, but it's uh, it just takes some, takes some fiddling to get used to. Um, but the same things can be done to any of these layers. The terrain can also be messed with. It made it a little bit darker that way. Uh, we can change streets colors, change transparency. You can see I'm actually making it look kind of hideous this way, but uh, there are a lot of options to play with in any case. So, um, save changes, and again, if I share this link here, then folks will get a full page map that looks like this, along with any information that I've added as a point of interest.